Renaissance Synergy how-to video, creating a Blinky project from scratch using E-squared Studio. In this video presentation, we will demonstrate how to create a project for the S5D9 promotion kit from scratch using E-squared Studio and the Renaissance Synergy software package and its configurators, and how to add user code to the application for toggling LED1 on the promotion kit. Creating an application is really easy with all the tools the Renaissance Synergy platform provides. The Synergy Software Package, or SSP for short, provides you with all the functions needed and makes them very simple, as all the functionality can be accessed through intuitive API calls. The integrated solutions development environment, e Studio, provides a wizard for setting up new projects, and the SSP configurator lets you tailor all aspects of the Synergy Software Package. So what is left is to add code to your application to provide the functionality you need. All low-level code is already taken care of for you by the Synergy platform. If you want to follow the different steps of this demonstration, you will need eSquared Studio and the Synergy software package to be installed on your Windows workstation. If you didn't do that already, you might want to watch the video titled Installing eSquared Studio for Renaissance Synergy before continuing. First, start eSquared Studio from the Start menu of your workstation. A window asking for the location of the workspace will show. You can either accept the default or choose your own. In our case, we will use a directory called My Synergy Projects. Click on OK to close this window. If you started the development environment for the first time, you will need to dismiss the welcome screen first, as it will block other views from showing. Click on Workbench to close it. Writing a new program always requires that you create a project first. There are multiple ways to perform this task, and we use the main menu for that. Go to File, New, Synergy C, C++ Project, and the Templates section screen will show. As we want to create a C executable, highlight the entry called Renaissance Synergy C Executable Project and click on Next. This will bring up the Synergy Project Configurator. At first, you will need to give the project a name, for example, My Blinky Project. Then check if the GCC ARM Embedded toolchain is selected, as this is the one we will use in this tutorial. You will need to tell eSquared Studio the location of the license file which was copied to your hard drive during the installation of the Synergy software package. Click on Change License File and a new window will show. Bring up the file selector by clicking on the button with the three dots just beside the license file entry field and then click on Browse and you will be taken to the correct location. Select the only file in the directory which is the evaluation license for the SSP. Click on Open and twice on OK. The details and rights for your license are now being displayed. Click on Next to show the next screen. Under SSP version, select the latest revision available. In our case, this is version 1.5.3. Under Board, we need to select the S5D9PK entry, as this is the board we will use. If you want to hear more about the kit, review the video titled Selecting the Right Renaissance Synergy Kit for Your Next Design. The device name will be inserted automatically for you, so there is no need to change anything here. Now verify the settings for the toolchain are the same as shown here. This ensures that your code will compile later on without problems. Click on Next to proceed to the next screen. This is the Project Template Selection screen. A project template may include several items. At the very least, it includes the correct board support package for the board and device combination we just selected on the screen before. Some templates even include a complete example project like the Blinky templates below. For our tutorial, we will select the BSP entry. This will include the baseboard support package for the S5 family of Synergy microcontrollers in our project. Clicking on Finish will load the template for our promotion kit. This was also the last action we needed to create our new project. Now click on Finish to close the project wizard. With that, the configurator will create the necessary files for the project as a last step. Once this post-processing is complete, you will be asked if you want to open the Synergy configuration perspective. Click on Yes. The Synergy Configurator will first present you with a summary of your project. There are other tabs like Clocks, where you can change the initial clock configuration of the project, or the Threads tab, which allows you to add and to configure different components. For our small tutorial project, there is nothing to change in this perspective. All necessary settings have already been made by the Project Wizard. So as the last action, click on the Generate Project Content button. This creates additional source and configuration files for your project based on the current settings and adds them to your project. Looking at the Project Explorer, you can examine which files and directories have been created. There are several additions to the project, but the only one we really need to take care of is the file called hal-entry.c. 
This is the one where we will add our small program. But for this, we will need to switch back to the C, C++ perspective. Now open the source file by double-clicking on it in the Project Explorer. The task our little application needs to perform is to toggle the green LED on the promotion kit labeled LED1 in a one-second interval. This LED is connected to one of the I.O. ports of the S5D9 group microcontroller on the board, and writing a 0 or a 1 into the corresponding port output data bit in the port function select register will turn the LED on or off. And writing this code is really easy, as the APIs and functions of the Synergy software package do most of the work for us. The SSP provides us with an instance of the I.O. port driver called G underscore I.O. port. This instance has an assigned API pointer called P underscore API, which points to a structure of possible actions. This structure includes a function named pin write, which allows us to write a specific level to the I.O. pin. The auto completion function of eSquared Studio is very handy now, as it allows you to select the correct members of a structure or array without having to know them by heart or by having to type them in manually. The smart manual of eSquared Studio tells you that the pin write function expects two parameters, the pin we want to write to and the level we want to set the pin to. But how do we know which pin LED1 is actually connected to? For this, we simply use one of the how functions of the board support package, which provides us with this information. All we need to do is make a call to a function called r underscore bsp underscore leds get which returns the number of LEDs on the current board and what pins they are connected to. For this, we need to define a structure of the type BSP underscore LEDs underscore T, named, for example, LEDs, which will be initialized by the R underscore BSP underscore LEDs get function. With that knowledge, we can now complete our pin write function call by using the information in the LEDs structure. The pin LED one is connected to can be accessed through the P underscore LEDs member array using bsp underscore led underscore led1 as index. Next, we need to give the level we want to write to the pin. On the S5D9 promotion kit, setting a pin connected to an LED to low using the macro io port underscore level underscore low will turn this LED on. Setting it to high will turn it off. As we want to provide a one second delay between the LED toggling, we need another call to a bsp API function this time to r underscore bsp underscore software delay. This function expects two parameters to be passed when called. First, the number of units we want to delay, and second, the base dimensions of the units. In our case, this would be one as a number of units, and seconds as base, represented by the macro bsp underscore delay underscore units underscore seconds. As we want to toggle the LED, we need a second call to the pin write function and a second delay loop. Copy and paste the two lines you just added and change the level written in the second call from IO port underscore level underscore low to IO port underscore level underscore high. To toggle the LED indefinitely, just add a while one loop around the code. And a quick hint, you can download the full project from the website of the Basics of Renaissance Synergy platform book if you do not want to type the code yourself. Now that the code is finished, the last step is to compile the project. For that, click on the Build button on the main menu bar and the process will start. The project should build with zero errors and zero warnings. And this is the end of this tutorial. In this video presentation, we showed you how easy it actually is to create code for the Redis SNG platform. The next video in this series, called Debugging the Blinky Project using eSquared Studio, We'll show you the details on how to download and run the project we just created on the promotion kit. Thank you for watching, and we suggest that you have a look at the other videos in this series as well. <laughs>